Hello everyone, I am not an affiliated reviewer. I paid the full price for the Plus 4 printer. My goal is not to give you an in-depth review. You can find it on many other professional YouTube channels, but to share with you my opinion, just to use your feedback. On the packaging side, I believe the manufacturer takes it really seriously. The packaging is very well done. I received a good number of different tools during the last several years and almost always had an issue with something scratched or broken. Yeah, let's be honest, delivery guys quite often are not very careful with what they deliver. You can see on this picture that delivery guys just ignored all the labels on the box and left it next to my door on the wrong side of the box. By the way, even without calling the doorbell, not surprising. Knowing that there were two glass doors inside, I was worried. However, the very tight packaging and very good quality materials, including a very fancy soft rubber corners, on the printer it did the job very well. Everything is in perfect condition. It looks like the printer is built with very high quality materials. Also, it's really made of plastic, but very high quality plastic. A couple of very small user experience related points I would add. It has the power cable connector at the right side of the printer, which is very convenient, very easily accessible. However, I wish this cable would be like 90 degree cable instead of the straight one. It would really help to save some space. The second point is that the printer cleans the nozzle before every print and it drops its poo from the back of the printer. Unfortunately, there is no cover, no box or anything to catch it. So as a result, it just goes on the floor, behind the workbench, anywhere you got the point. There is a very convenient metal plate at the back of the printer, so I printed a small box of magnets to catch that poop. Yeah, I'll show you later. The uh, firmware version I received was 1.0.0. That's quite an indicator. Usually this means that the firmware is really raw. It turned out to be a bit baggy and also it asked me for the uh, manual printer calibration after I turn it on for the first time and it told me that I need to use some kind of calibration plate with 0, 0.05 millimeter thickness and obviously this calibration plate is not really included with the printer. So luckily uh, the firmware version issue idea somehow popped up in my head and I went to the official website where I found that the current latest version is 1.47. Version update was very easy, just downloaded it, saved it on the USB drive, selected the offline update, and after about 10 minutes, the new firmware was running and was not asking me for any manual calibrations. The uh, auto calibration did all it had to. Five stars so far. The uh, Quiddy Studio app is very, very easy to use with a lot of presets, quickly connects to the printer over the network, Slicer worked very well so far for me. I did a couple of prints. Printed Benji. Who doesn't print Benji these days? So the G code for this print is preloaded in the machine already, but for PLA filament, because I'm using PETG, I changed this code a little bit to raise the bed temperature to 65 degrees and the nozzle temperature to 250. It took about like 20 minutes to print. I have no complaints about the quality. It's very good in my opinion. You can see a few drops on the top side of the circles, but not a big deal. Other than that, all lines are pretty solid. Another toy that I printed is this Halloween Dino. I have to say that I wasn't really able to print it directly on the bed without the raft. I don't know exactly why yet. I believe it should be possible to set the correct configuration for the speed and temperature to print it directly on the bed. Not really blaming the printer, I guess it's just me. The result is pretty good as you can see, accurate layers, no wobbling anywhere. This is another small print. I made a very simple model and exported it on purpose with very low density, low quality STL file to see if the printer can accurately repeat many small corners instead of printing a simple circle. The result is very nice. Now my filament has a bit better holder to fit the uh, spool dimensions. And the last print that I want to share here is the poop box that I mentioned earlier. So you can see here that I have four 
small five millimeter magnets so the print turned out very good so i specified exact five millimeters holes for these magnets here and the magnets fit very tight and did not need to glue anything really like it why i cannot really give this printer five stars but i really want to i personally had no issues yet really with this printer but it is also fair to say that i haven't really loaded it much i haven't used it above 260 degrees nozzle temperature and 65 degrees on the bed what i discovered is that there are known issues with hardware design which I wish the Kitty team would inform buyers, at least by email. We receive marketing mails, why not to send the info about those discovered issues? There is a YouTube channel called the Noziworks, and I'll put all the links below. You can just go ahead and watch. Long story short is that there are two, by this moment, maybe more videos demonstrating hardware issues. One of them is with the nozzle bearing, and the second one with the heated chamber. So both of these issues are hardware issues. That means that this require a colon repair. So in other words, the Kitty team would need to send us step-by-step -step instructions how to address these problems. In case with the uh, heated chamber, I think it may even require replacement of some physical parts inside the printer. We'll see. I suggest you go ahead, watch these videos and take notes. What's next for me? I'll just keep loading this printer. We'll see what it can and cannot do. I may record another video later as an update. Thank you and have fun.